big show, Paul, today. Paul, sir, how are you? Embarrassing well, Nick. How are you doing? I, I love, I'm, I'm sorry to embarrass you now more, but I love the fact we are literally two minutes away from the station and you managed to get lost. Find us here, fantastic. What can I say? An, Ar- <laughs> an Irish man in London, I've been here for nearly 30 years, and still get lost in the terrorist every time. Listen, let me ask a question, kind of, obviously your sporting prowess and background, and then you end up sitting here, prowess, <laughs> sitting here with me, kind of talking about psychology, leadership. Um, how was the transition? How do you how do we end up here? Well, it's funny. I don't even think there is a transition. I think that it's it's always been there. It's well, not only has it always been there for me, it's always there for everybody. Mm. You know, the, the one thing we carry around with us the whole of our lives is is our mind and our thinking and our thoughts. And uh, interesting when, when I start to talk about and think about when I was a kid and growing up in Belfast, which you know, in the troubles in Northern Ireland in the 1970s and 1980s. Just to try and paint a picture for people who may not be aware of it. Yeah. It, it was literally tanks driving down your street. There were soldiers walking past you, you know, with their rifles. Yeah. And if you're walking to school and sometimes you get one across the back of the head, there was bombs going off on a daily basis. And that's your normal. Yeah. And so the way you think about things is that's what I've been carrying through my life until I was 16. Literally came across on the boat to join Tottenham Hotspur in 1994. Yeah. And what I didn't realize is that. I had a massive inferiority complex. I threw no fault of my own, nothing to do with my parents for, I don't know why it happened, but I clearly did because on my first day, I met this global World Cup winning superstar yeah. called Jurgen Klinsmann. And it was that automatic belief system of me looking at this World Cup winner and thinking, if my first day at Tottenham Hotspur, I'm aspiring to get in the first team to be a professional footballer. And if that's what my target is, there's no way in the world I can ever do that. So I didn't realize I had this inferiority mm. contact, this massive limit in belief. And it was only whenever I was given a book by a good friend of mine. Um, the book was Awaken a Jam Within, written by Tony Robbins. So again, yes. absolute classic in the in the world of personal development. And reading that book as a 17-year-old kid, you're thinking, A, why did I take the book and not just throw it on the shoulder and throw it in the corner because I'm a 17-year-old yeah. footballer? <laughs> yeah. Why did I read it? Not only did I read it, and if you want to sum up this this big 500-page book, it was pretty much stop looking outside of yourself. Yeah. Because everything you'll ever need, you've already got within. I know I like, even just got a little bit of tingle down my spine <laughs> just because it was so powerful whenever I read that. Yeah. And then not only did I read that, take that message from it, I then started applying it and started writing goals for myself and what do I want to get in my career? Did you talk about it to others while you're doing no. this? It was just for you. Just for me. And this was the interesting thing because then he started asking things like, what do you, what can you do that you're not currently doing? Yeah. So it was a bit like, if you want to completely change your outcomes and your results in life, you need to completely change your behavior. And even that's just a simple, simple equation yeah. that I had no idea of. So whenever you talk about this transition in psychology, it was really, it was it was just a constant building and learning and accumulating knowledge and applying it to myself. And then, of course, I was in a high-performance environment and yeah. professional football. But so at what point did you start talking about it? Well, that, that was the top part yeah. because it is a, it's an environment. And listen, I think because obviously I've been doing a lot of work in the last 15 years in, in the corporate world, it happens and probably the same conversations are happening more at the senior levels mm-hmm. where nobody wants to show weakness. Yes. Nobody wants to show the fact that they've got doubts or issues or challenges. And it takes a really, really strong person to show that weakness, if that's what you want to call it, more vulnerability. Yeah. So it was only whenever I got to about more 20 or 29 and I felt much more comfortable mm-hmm. in myself. I was a senior member of the team and I realized I was coming out to the other side of the yeah. career. And so when I did stop at 32, it was actually we had a sports psychologist, a guy called Gavin Drake, who mm. worked with us in Norwich City. And whenever he suggested that I go straight from football, straight into this world of, you know, corporate training and speaking and keynote speaking, A, I didn't even know what a keynote speech was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> and then whenever he told me about what you could do, and, and, and once I started looking into it, I also couldn't believe why there was nobody from my background mm. had ever done this before. It, 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 it does fascinate me. It's you, weird, isn't it? You've got, you've got rugby players, you've got athletes, you've got Olympians, Olympians. military, academics. Oh, and I, we've had this conversation, and it's a perception of 
It's perception of loneliness. Absolutely. And again, this was probably another reason why, I don't know if you want to call me weird or not, but whenever reading that book at 17, but also by the time I was 21, yeah. I'd already decided that I wanted to write a book. I wanted the title to be The Stupid Footballer is Dead. And it was because of this misconception that I thought that people assume we're all stupid. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that was the case. Maybe there were certain players that weren't getting as a good reputation, <laughs> but unfortunately we all got sort of tall yeah. in the same brush and, and it was the first thing that I thought right I want to write a book I want to go into this world I want to almost dispel the myth mm. and so as I started working in this field of psychology as I started delivering speeches and then they've gone into more leadership programs it was just a case of how can I share this mindset this way of thinking that for me is completely normal yeah because if for 20 years someone has been telling you every single minute of every hour of every day that you're training that you need to improve you need to get better yeah. you need to do it fast you need to do it back it's like it, it eventually conditions you where some people have you know an executive coach one hour a month yeah yeah. i got it every day yeah when i was training for 20 years so because i think it's a good condition because it's almost it's maximizing your potential how do you get the most of yourself yeah but what's really interesting, Nick, is whenever I talk about these things, I don't say it because people want to be a professional footballer. It's more about, I was really, really clear whenever I was 16, when I joined Tottenham Hotspur, all I wanted to do was, I wanted to be a professional footballer. Yeah. Probably like millions of kids around. Yeah, yeah. And, and it just it hasn't happened. It's just yet. It's going to happen very soon. <laughs> I know a few people. <laughs> um but I still wanted to be a professional footballer. I wanted to be a Premier League player. I don't want to be an international footballer. Yeah. Now, that was my focus. That was my goal. That's all I wanted to do. And because I put everything I had into that for 20 years, obviously, very fortunately, managed to achieve it, achieve everything I wanted yeah. to do in the sport. And then when I came out of professional football, because Gavin almost mentored me, and, and it was like a seamless transition in yeah. the world of Keenan speaking. And then because I had well, why has there never been a keynote speaker from football? Yeah. It's the number one sport in the country, number one sport in the world. And I was like, why can't I do this? So that was now my next goal. And this is why it doesn't seem to be coincidence. These things happen to me because if I go back to that book at 17, yeah. it's all about so, stop looking outside of yourself because you've already got it. So do you think kind of, like mass generalization, but actually one of the issues we have as individuals in society is, that, is we've got all these choice and we come out and it's like, you can do anything. And so, because we haven't got that focus, it means we don't achieve what we want to achieve because we don't know what it is. Whereas you're very lucky in the sense of this is what I want to do and therefore yeah. I'm going to go and do it. I was clear. So again, the, the, the first thing we would do if we're working with anyone is it's all about clarity. Mm. Where are you today? What do you want to do tomorrow, next month, next year, five years, 10 years? Same as you, growing a business. Mm. You know, this business doesn't just happen. It starts because you're like, this is the idea of what I want to create. And then you're going to work really hard to make it happen as well as dealing with the obstacles and the setbacks and COVID and everything else. But it's the exact same process. And it's probably why as individuals, we, we're so aspirational. Mm. You know, our generation probably had more than our parents' generation. We had more than their parents' mm. generation. It's just, it's an evolution in society. So if I wanted to be more, have more, do more in my life, mm. well, the starting point is I need to be clear where I'm at today. Mm. And if I'm really clear where I'm at today, then I can start to make the process of where am I going to go. And again, we're talking sweep and generalization. Yeah, but course. I would also go back to that I've been doing this for 15 years now. I've asked that question to thousands of people and lots of audiences around the world. And honestly, without judging people, because that's I'm not here to do that, mm. because, you know, I'm in no position to judge. The amount of people that if I ask a simple question of what do you want? So that's the most basic question yeah. in the world. Or how would you define success? Or take away your work targets because you know everybody kind of gets to put them on. Yeah. Let's give me some kind of personal goals or personal targets. If you're to ask any of those questions, you'd be probably amazed how few people in the world are really clear about what they want in life. And again, I also get that because this is the problem where just for some people getting through the day is, yeah, is challenging. Yeah. And if that's your normal and if that's what is success for you brilliant yeah but of course there's lots of people in the world who want to run a successful business people want to run a marathon people want to lose weight people want to have a million pounds in the bank whatever it is lots of people want more mm. and i think the other challenge with it is i know lots of people who want amazing things in their life 
as long as they don't have to get up too early. Yes. <laughs> don't have to work too hard. Yeah, yeah, Someone yeah. come along and add it to them on a plate. Yeah. And of course, it doesn't happen because we know that if you want to do anything in life, it's not just about having a clear path. It's not just about dealing with setbacks. It's that relentless mm-hmm. working towards it and keep going. And actually, even when you get to the point of where you think you might be successful, whatever success looks like for yeah. you, that probably won't be enough anymore. Mm-hmm. Because some of us are just on this continuous journey of of setting worthwhile goals for, us, yeah. for ourselves. So even now, for me, all I wanted to be was a keynote speaker yeah, two yeah. years ago. And now the fact that I do well, it around the world, well, that's we not just, enough. We're just talking about it. It's not enough because I want to be yeah. not just a keynote speaker. I want to deliver global leadership programs for the biggest organizations in the world. Some people think that's a crazy idea. Why would this kid from West Belfast yeah, yeah. do leadership programs you know, for the biggest companies in the world? Well, I feel like with the team, the world-class team we have, we can provide a new way of thinking, exposure to world-class people. That, let's be honest, most people have no idea how they exist and work. Thank you so much. Aside from the fact you've given me that little bit of hope on the fact that I still become a professional footballer, which I just don't believe. <laughs> it's been it's been absolutely pleasure speaking to you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.